evening. This is Ken Roberts inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, The Disappearance of Mr. Dizelle. Night, a quiet street of old conservative brownstone mansions. On one of them, a small bronze sign bears the modest legend, Adam Dizelle, dealer in rare books. Approaching this house, but on the opposite side of the street. <laughs> Doggone, Luella, I enjoyed that movie. Them two fellas was funny. Hmm, pretty good, all right, but half past 11 is too late for us to be coming home, Henry. I got to be up cooking breakfast for Mr. Dizelle by 7 in the morning. Yeah, we both got to... Hmm, Mr. Dizelle seems to be keeping late hours himself tonight. There's a light showing behind the blinds in his office. Yeah. Well, what, what was that? Somebody's shooting guns. In our house. Mr. Dizelle's house. Somebody's busting out our door, running down the steps. Yes, three men. Two of them is carrying the side man. Can they get me in that automobile? Now, you stay here, Luella. I'm going to... No, you stay right here till we find a policeman. Let me look for a policeman. I see two of them coming, Henry. They heard them shot. That car's getting away. Police! Police! All right, we're coming. We're what coming happened? Here. Three men in that black sedan, officer. We saw them come out and... I'll come into your car and go after them. Schultz, you'll see what the shooting was about. Okay, Sarge. The shooting was in our house, Mr. Dizelle's house. Hey, you come with me. We'll get inside. You two work for Mr. Dizelle, don't you? Yes, sir. We keep house for him and Mr. Lawrence. We live down in the basement. Yeah, that front door's wide open. It sounded like them shots was fired in Mr. Dizelle's office. His office door's closed, Luella. Yeah, and it's locked, too. I'll bust it here. <laughs> Oh, there's blood on the floor there. Blood! Yeah, and the office is empty. Where's Mr. Dizelle? What happened to Mr. Dizelle? All right, now, if you good people just let me get one more picture, I'll be all finished. Are all these pictures of Luella and me going to be in the papers, Mr. Casey? Well, the best ones will be. Now, now, hold it just like that. That's all. Thank you. Now, you two can go now. You've told me all you can, I guess. We told you all we know, Captain Logan. Come on, Henry. Good night. Night. Good night. Well, I suppose you'd give us a lowdown on this business, Logan. Annie and I just got the assignment. Yeah, you so and late. Miss Williams are slipping, Casey. The other cameras and reporters are all finished before you two showed up. Hmm. Well, that's the breaks. Sometimes they work the other way. Oh, what have you learned about the shooting, Captain Logan? Uh, nothing of much value yet. A black sedan pulled away from here right after the shots were heard. One of the three men in that sedan was dragged or carried to it by the others. He was probably Adam Dizelle. Anyway, Dizelle is gone. Bloodstains in this office, plus some bullet holes, indicate he was the victim, probably kidnapped. Hey, a slug went through this very expensive-looking book. Yeah, we found the slug, and two more, all fired from a thirty-eight revolver. Hey, Logan, maybe the two guerrillas came here intending a robbery, and Dizelle discovered him, they plugged him without killing him, and then took him away so he couldn't describe or identify him. Ah, uh, Casey, our experts tell me there's a folio Shakespeare worth plenty on that shelf in plain sight. It could have been lifted in a split second, but it wasn't. Well, such extremely rare volumes as folio Shakespeare's must be almost impossible for thieves to dispose of, Captain Logan. The ownership of every such book in existence is known. Uh, Miss Williams, book collecting in some instances is nothing less than a disease. Rabid collectors will buy items they know are stolen just for the sheer kick of personal possession. Uh, Casey, you remember that little crook who called himself Professor Ishka? Ishka? Yeah, yeah, an interesting little guy, too. He and I were almost buddies, Annie, before unsympathetic cops like Logan sent him back to the big house about ten years ago. For his third offense. Now, Professor Ishka was a rare book thief, Miss Williams, but he got bragging streaks occasionally. You know, theft may have been the motive in this case, Logan. And I'm hoping to get a lead on the real motive when Neil Lawrence is located. Neil Lawrence? Yeah, he's Giselle's nephew. He lives here and acts as a sort of assistant to his uncle. So he should know a lot about his business and personal associations. And the servant you met told me that Lawrence left the house early this evening to go to the theater. Giselle was all alone here then from uh, about 8 p.m. on. Yeah. I see the lock on this office door is broken. Now, the cop who got here right after the shooting found it locked and he broke it. I wonder why the kidnappers bothered to lock it from the outside when they were in such a hurry. Yeah, I've wondered about that. They must have taken the key away with them. We haven't been able to find it. Mm. It's the only door. 
The walls are solid bookshelves from floor to ceiling, except for those two windows facing the street. And those windows are locked from inside. Giselle's visitors got in through that door. Well, he must have admitted them then. And because he knew them, since they came long after business hours. Yeah, I think he knew them. Captain Logan's in your uncle's shop, Mr. Lawrence. He'll tell you all about it. Lawrence is here. Thank you, officer. I'll go in. Now, come right in, Mr. Lawrence. I've been waiting for you. I'm Captain Logan, the Homicide Bureau. One of your men outside just told me... I'm sorry you came home to such bad news. He gave me no details, Captain. What happened? Uh, first, I must ask you some routine questions. I'm told you went to the theater tonight. Yes, the Globe. Later, we had a few drinks and steak at the Bristol Club. I just came from there. By we, you mean the young lady was with you? No. Well, what was your friend's name, please? This is all part of a necessary general checkup. I... I was with Bruce Madden. Not Bruce Madden, Jr.? Yes. I know you check up on anything I tell you, so... <laughs> I've met Bruce Madden, Jr. professionally when he tried to extort money from his wealthy father. So you're a friend of his. Now look here, Captain. I've never been connected with any of the, the trouble Bruce has been in. We've simply been friends since we were kids. And... and you and he were together tonight when your wealthy uncle was probably both shot and kidnapped by two men. Sit down, Mr. Lawrence. I'm going to ask you some questions that aren't just routine. Captain Logan thinks Dizelle's nephew, this Neil Lawrence, had something to do with his uncle's kidnapping, huh, Casey? He's about convinced that Lawrence and his pal Bruce Madden Jr. had everything to do with it, Ethelbert. Police checkup shows that Lawrence and Madden left the Globe Theater about 11 o'clock, and they didn't show up at the Bristol Club until after 12.30. The shots inside Dizelle's place were heard at 11.30. Hmm. But well, why should this Lawrence put a snatch on his uncle? And who's Bruce Madden Jr.? Oh, don't you ever read the papers, Ethelbert? Oh, sure, Miss Williams, but... Oh, Bruce Madden Jr. is the playboy yeah. son of that rich millionaire. Yeah, who, uh... yeah, yeah. Several months ago, Madden Sr. washed his hands of the young screwball and cut off his supply of easy money. And young Madden tried to extort money from his father. Now, Logan figures that he and Bruce Jr. got desperate for the old green stuff and put the snatch on Dazelle in order to get it. It listens to me like he figures right. Has he put Lawrence and Madden under arrest yet? No, because he hasn't got any real evidence. They're being watched every minute, though. Well, Neil Lawrence doesn't look to me like a, a kidnapper. <laughs> He's a good-looking young guy, Ethelbert. Well, now, that has nothing to do with my opinion. We're not even sure there's been a kidnapping. No, not yet. Until there's some proof, such as a uh, demand for ransom, I'm going to believe, well, that, that Neil Lawrence is simply a victim of circumstances. <laughs> Henry. Henry. It's half past six, Henry. Haul yourself out that bed. Okay, Lula. Well, we gotta get breakfast for Mr. Lawrence now, so hop into your clothes while I go upstairs and fetch in the milk. Why don't that milkman leave them bottles in front of our basement like he used to? Cause told him not. To. Dogs come sniffing down there. Mr. Lawrence? Yes, Sir Ellen. It's time to get up. I haven't been to bed. Oh, of course, you're so worried about your uncle. Well, oh, Mr. Lawrence, here's a letter addressed to you. A letter? Yes, it was lying half under the door when I took in the milk. It's got no postage stamps on it. Well, let's see it. Mr. Lawrence? Mr. Lawrence, you look funny. Is there something in that letter about your uncle? It's... From my uncle. From Mr. Dizel? Yes, I must phone the police. But it tells me he's being held by kidnappers and that I must raise $150,000 to ensure his safe return. Yeah, you and Miss Williams can look at the ransom letter, Casey. But not a line about it in your paper until I say okay. It's off the record, Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. He even tells Lawrence how to raise the money. He's to pledge or sell securities and books and borrow whatever else is required. 
You sure this letter is in Dizelle's handwriting? It's though? authentic. We've checked on that. And someone came here during the night and, and stuck it under the front door. Miss hmm? Williams, Lawrence stuck it under the door from inside. Four of my best men were watching the outside of this house, and they say no one came near that door except the milkman. Well, maybe the milkman. We're investigating him, but Lawrence is our guy, plus young Madden. Now, last night, they forced Giselle to write this letter. Then, sometime before morning, Lawrence slid it under the street door for Luella Clarence to find when she went for the milk. <laughs> Annie, it looks like the good-looking Mr. Lawrence all the way. <laughs> well, you'll let Lawrence raise the ransom dough, then, according to the instructions of this letter, Lawrence. Yeah, he's out on that job now, trailed by my guys and two FBI agents. FBI? Now, I notified the feds the moment this letter proved we had a kidnapping case. Yeah, they've been nice so far and haven't taken it completely out of my hands. Excuse me, gentlemen, and Miss Williams. Oh, uh, what is it, Mrs. Clarence? Well, I got to think that maybe you all come up here without having much breakfast and would like some hot coffee. Coffee? Hey, I would. Oh, oh. Me too. Well, I got some percolating back in the dining room. Uh, lead us to it. <laughs> come on. You know, the dining room is just behind this room. But you got to go out and round this hall to get to it. This shop here used to be the parlor before Mr. Dizelle had it built into a bookshop. Did you work here when it was just a residence, Luella? No, Mr. Casey. Henry and me come here to work about six years ago, just a little before Mr. Lawrence did. And Mr. Dizelle, he had the place changed for his bookshop long before that. Well, sit down at that table and I'll serve you coffee and sandwiches. Uh -huh. And sandwiches? Oh. oh, they're just made out of odds and ends. I had an icebox. I was going to open up some canned ham and chicken to keep for emergencies, but I found that man of mine and ate him up. Your husband's an icebox robber, Luella? <laughs> Henry declares up and down he didn't touch nothing, Miss Williams, but he's lied to me before. Here's your coffee. Oh, Luella, you're a friend in need. Yeah, no. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Dig into him. I got the makings for more. You're a... Entertaining a mob who won't hesitate to ask for more, Luella. Well, that's the kind of people I like to oh, feed. Well, it's pickles for me. Yeah, it's some fireplace you have in this dining room. Mm, isn't it a beauty, Casey? It's so big. Oh, poor Mr. Dizelle. Love that old fireplace. But it burned up so much wood. My Henry got miseries in his back from toting it. Napkin, Logan. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks. Mm. Oh, there's a telephone. Excuse me. Please. Oh, you have an extension here in the dining room. Hmm? Yes, sir. Mr. Dizelle put extensions all over this house. Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, just a minute, sir. It's for you, Captain Logan. Hmm? Your headquarters calling. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, hold this pickle, Casey. Got it. Uh, Logan speaking. Uh, identification positive? When was he found? How long have you been dead? I'll leave Sergeant Martin in charge here and get right up there. What is it, Logan? Mm, yeah, what's uh, up? Quite a coincidence. Another dealer in rare books, a guy named Vladimir, has just been found shot to death in Eastview Park. And according to the medical examiner, he died at about the same time last night that Adam Dizel was taken from this house. And to make the coincidence more coincidental, Ethelbert, it appears that this second book dealer, Vladimir, was killed with a 38 slug of the same type used in the Dizelle shooting. And he wasn't killed at the spot in Eastview Park where his body was found. No, the medical examiner says that the corpse was thrown out of a moving automobile. Hmm. Well, what kind of a book dealer was this, Vladimir? About as different from Dizelle as a piece of glass is different from a diamond. Dizelle's a big timer with an A1 record, while his Vladimir character has been indicted several times for having stolen books in his possession. Hmm. From what you've told me, I can't see any real tie-up between his murder and the Dizelle job. The way that ransom letter was found nails Lawrence for his uncle's kidnapping. And it ain't possible that he and his pal Madden could have been shooting up this Vladimir at the same time. Now, now the evidence against Lawrence is purely circumstantial, Ethelbert. Mm. Oh, I got some clean-up work to do at the office. You coming over, Casey? Mm, no, no, I'm through for the day, Annie. I'll wait around for you here, huh? Okay. <laughs> See you both later. So long, Miss Williams. Wish I knew more about the rare book racket. I, I don't trust coincidences, Ethelbert. There must be some connection. Hey, between... Ethelbert, how about a little service? Hmm? Oh, I'll be right with you, Mr. Evans. Excuse me, Casey, I gotta wait on a customer. Yeah, oh, sure, pal, go ahead. Huh. Mm -hmm. Hello, Casey. Huh? I've been waiting and watching for you to be alone. Yeah? I don't think I know you, brother. And I've lost weight and considerable hair since the last time you saw me. 
prison never agreed with me. Hey, wait a minute. You're the guy that used to call yourself Professor Ishka. Yes, quite. Well, well. When'd you get out? I'm glad to see you. Only last week. Huh. What do you know? Captain Logan and I were talking about you only a few days ago. Running into you now, Professor, is like the answer to a prayer. But this meeting is not accidental, Casey. I've been trying to reach you all day. Yeah? Why should you want to... I want to talk to you about Adam Dizel and Paul Vladimir. Uh-huh. Well, coincidences do happen. What do you know about those two? I was in the racket. Yes, I remember. But you may not recollect a stolen autographed copy of the first and only edition of Mrs. Browning's Sonnets by EBB was responsible for my most recent experience as a guest of the state. Yeah, it's because I recollected your specific talents uh, that Wait, I... there's a vacant table in that corner. It'll be just as well if certain people don't see me with you, so I'll talk fast. Okay, go ahead. Casey, I'm not a stoolie, so I can't go to the police. But I've got to get a guy, and you can help me. Talk straight, Professor. Is this straight? Paul Vladimir was my brother. Huh? And Adam Dizel killed him. Dizel killed... Vladimir. Yes. Casey, the rich and respectable Adam Dizel, the reliable expert, has been the biggest fence in the hot book racket for 20 years. Are you on the level? A hundred percent. Dizel has also been the biggest double cross in the racket. My brother Paul and two other gentlemen, whose names you don't have to know, went to his place to collect for some hot stuff they'd passed him on consignment. He sold his stuff, but he refused to pay. He'd attempted that sort of thing before. Paul swung a punch at him. Dizelle thought the three were about to gang up on him, which they were. So he pulled a gun and began shooting. Paul got a bullet in the chest. The others carried him out and went away fast. It was Vladimir, not Dizelle, who was taken away in that black sedan. Yes. When Paul died in the car, his friends couldn't risk being found with his body. They had to dump him in the park. What happened to Dizelle after the shooting? He took a run out, of course. There wasn't any kidnapping... Why have you told me this? Casey, I'm an ex-convict. My word is worth nothing to the police. And uh, to preserve my criminal standing, of course, I don't dare talk to him anyway. I don't know where Dizelle is hiding out, but with the information I've given you, I think you can find him and see that he pays for the killing of my brother. I'm going to be pretty sore if this turns out to be a bum steer, Professor. Casey, believe me, I'm leveling all the way. tell you who told me this, Logan, but I'm convinced the story's a straight one. Well, if it is, Dizelle's deliberately playing up his supposed kidnapping in order to collect 150 grand so he'll be well-heeled when he starts for South America or wherever he plans his permanent hideout. Sure, and his nephew's probably in on the deal. Yeah, but if Dizelle was dealing in stolen books, we should have found some in his house, and we didn't. And he must have another joint somewhere. Maybe that's where he's keeping undercover right now. Yeah... Well, we'll just sit tight till he sends instructions as to how to pay over. Oh, nuts, that phone of mine never stops. Homicide Bureau, Captain Logan. Yes, Sergeant. Yeah? Where'd you find it? No, don't open it. I want to see it exactly as you found it. I'll be right up there. Come on, Casey. We're heading for Dizelle's house. What? One of my guys on duty there just found a sealed envelope addressed to Neil Lawrence... Lying on the sidewalk in front of Dizelle's place. This may be the instructions as to how to pay that ransom. It's a letter of instruction from Dizelle, all right, Casey, but not of final instruction. Here, read it. My dear nephew, my captors demand that you bring the $150,000... I have begged you to raise to my house by tomorrow at the latest. There, it must be kept in readiness for instant delivery. Mm. Hmm. Logan, uh, come out suddenly. I want to ask you, Sergeant. Sergeant. What? Come on, will you? Hey, Sergeant. Yeah, Casey? Where did you find this letter addressed to Lawrence exactly? On the sidewalk, right here. Underneath a window of Dizelle's office. Huh? Yeah, it was tied to a little rock. Oh, Dizelle himself probably drove by here in a cab and tossed out the weighted envelope. You kept the rocket was tied to, Sergeant? On a case like this, we keep everything. Here it is. Hey, that's not a rock. That's a piece of fire brick. What's the difference? Say, look. 
Where's the nearest place you can get a tear gas bomb? Tear gas? Uh, the 6th Precinct Station, a couple of blocks from here. Yeah, well, have your sergeant get one, pal, will you? Quick. Oh, look, I'll tear explain ga- it in a minute. Now, don't waste time, uh, please. Okay, sergeant, get a tear gas bomb. I'm on my way, Captain. You better get two. Now, Casey, what's the big idea? Logan, I think I know where Mr. Adam Dazelle is hiding. <laughs> See if you're right about this, I, I... And I'll give you my shield, and you can teach me how to operate a press camera. <laughs> takes a clever guy to operate a press camera. And it takes a screwball to get your kind of nutty ideas. We'll know how nutty my idea is in just 15 seconds if your sergeant does his stuff on time. Oh, he will. This shop of Dizelles is a modern place, Casey. You're figuring as though it was some old European castle. There's the first tear gas, Mom. Fell behind that wall, all right. Straight down the chimney. (laughs) There goes number two. All right, have your gun ready, Logan. Our guy faces a murder rap, and he's got a thirty-eight. Hey, that section of bookshelves, Casey, it's swinging out like a door. Yes, and our kidnapped book dealer is coming from behind him. Drop that gun, Dizel, and stick up your hands. All right, all right, but let me get air. Oh, that gas. Let me get air. Uh, (laughs) Let's all get fresh air, Logan. Tear gas has filled this room. (laughs) Oh, can I? I haven't cried so much since the Dodgers. Well, you know. <laughs> that fella, Dizel, was hiding in his own house, Casey, in a secret chamber? Secret Chamber describes it too romantically, Ethelbert. When Dizelle had the living room of that old mansion remodeled into an office in a bookshop, he had bookcases built across the opening of a very big fireplace that was there. And that section of bookcase was hinged like a door. Mm, and the fireplace behind it gave him a handy and altogether hidden little room in which to store stolen books. And when he suddenly needed a hiding place for himself, well, he had it. He got plenty of air through the chimney, and at night he sneaked into the kitchen and got supplies of food and water. And he planted the ransom note under the door himself. And his housekeeper told us that she thought her husband was robbing the icebox. Mm, when did you start to get wise to the setup, Casey? Mm, not too long after I should have been. I'd noticed a big fireplace in the dining room and wondered why there wasn't one in the original parlor. Mm. And the door of the bookshop was found locked after the shooting. And I'd wondered why guys leaving in such a hurry hadn't had bothered to lock it. And Dizelle had locked it, Ethelbert to make sure no one could get in before he'd opened and closed his secret chamber. And he's confessed that his nephew had no part in the affair at all. Everything finally added up when Logan said that Lawrence had put the dough in Dizelle's office safe. That was a logical place to put it, and it suddenly hit me that that was what Dizelle figured and wanted, so he could come out and get it. Then when I saw the piece of fire brick that had been tied to the second ransom letter, I knew my total was right. Yeah, but how did he figure he'd get away with that money when there was cops all around the place? Well, he meant to climb up the flue of the big chimney and make his getaway over the, you know, the roofs of adjoining houses. Hmm. Well, Annie, how about taking you home now? (laughs) Well, not tonight, Casey. I have a, a, well, I uh, have a date with a Mr. Lawrence. Huh? Mm, I knew he couldn't be a kidnapper. Hey. Casey looks like he ain't so sure about that, Miss Williams. Not so sure. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Uh. 